you start making your way to the auditorium, we're ready to start our afternoon session. I think so. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> So you can see why I selected them for our post-lunch presentation. So this will be perfect. It's going to be perfect. So, Okay, everybody, why don't we go ahead and get started here. Um, again, I've reminded you this many times, make sure to complete those forms that I talked about earlier if you're interested in participating in our projects, and then the registry, and then, of course, the evaluation, too. Some people have noted the objectives in the evaluation form might not match up with the presentations. That's my fault. I might have accidentally not updated the objectives from last year. Just give an overall rating if that's the case. Um, so that, that would be great, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Okay, well, um, I chose this presentation next because I thought it was kind of the ideal presentation for after lunch, but also, I think um, many of you over the years have always asked about, you know, what are the best ways I can engage my loved one with memory loss? And so our next presentation is The Art of Fun, Tapping into Your Personal Sense of Peace and Play. And uh, this is going to be presented by Mindy Bolton and Colleen Wold uh, Heibler. Thank you. Now, they asked me, Mindy asked me to introduce her this way, so it's not by my choice. It's uh, Oddball, Creative Engagement Professional and then certified dementia practitioner and communication specialist. And my understanding, we're going to have a really dramatic entrance, right, Mendy? So can you please start? All right, here we go. <laughs> and here she is. Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? Well, it's you, girl, and you should... <laughs> it's all around, no need to fake it, you can make the tell, why don't you take it, you're gonna make it after all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Mindy Bolton. All right. So I have, do you have to put it on now? Or? Yes, I've put Joe up to something. Yep. He's gonna wear a disguise for hopefully the second half of the day. Uh, and I don't go that far. But... <laughs> wow. Let's give it a oh shot here. Oh my goodness, you're so handsome. Mumbo man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I guess I'm Ed Asner to Mary Tyler Moore now, or what? So, yeah, is that what I am? <laughs> it's not actually staying on, but. That's the best thing ever. Thank you, Joe. Okay. It's, oh, so, thank you very much. All right. That's all you had to do. Very good. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> so, please, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo <-hoo! laughs> <Very good. laughs> Woohoo! Where's my other prop? My hair is getting a little frazzled. Oh. <laughs> All right, are you seriously ready to be totally unserious with us for an hour? Say yeah! yeah. A little louder, yeah. yeah! And a little louder. Oh, yeah! Woo! Gosh, I admire you musicians that like, I don't usually prance around like that, I'm winded. Okay. Okay, so we are so excited 
to be here today to explore the art of caring. Mm-hmm, I heard, yep. This is all interactive. You're not going to get away with much today without me hearing it. <laughs> all right. So, we are given caring experiences or opportunities left and right. Speaking of left and right, when I say go, please mingle with your neighbors to the left and the right. You can shake a hand, give a fist pound, whatever you want. Ready, go. Awesome. You listen incredibly well. Thank you. I saw a variety of embraces. I saw someone put their arm around the person next to them. I saw fist pounds. I don't know if there were any handshakes. There's tons of, way to, tons of ways to say hello to each other. This is super important. Sometimes we skip this. Actually, when I talked to my friend, Missy, she told me that whenever she goes to see her mom or whenever she sees her mom for the first time that day, she always gives her a kiss on the cheek. And it's what she really values. Jeez, I'm getting verklempt. Okay. Caregiving is way more fun as a collaboration, which is why I'm so happy that Colleen is here on stage with me as a collaborator. All of you are potential collaborators. When you proudly wear your I care crown, you see people as potential collaborators. So let's put our imaginary I care crowns on by lifting. First of all, imagine the I care crown. What would it look like? You don't have to say it, but okay, put your hands out. You're holding a crown, people. <clears throat> Lift it onto your head. Beautiful. It's on. Now make a pose like you're really cool. <laughs> yes, very good. You'll be wearing that for the next hour, at least. You can put it on whenever you want. Let me make sure I can do this correctly. Not that way. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> There we go. So back to Colleen. Colleen is an LPN that brings her musical gifts into long-term care and many other environments. She has over 12 years of experience in recreational therapy. She's been the opening act for Wayne Newton, Rich Little, Loretta Lynn, and most currently, Louie Anderson. Oh. Woo, go Louie. Colleen and I met some amount of years ago while I was working as a recreation assistant on a dementia care unit in a local care community. Kindred spirits we are. Our minds are as open as a 24-hour Walgreens. <laughs> and while each of you have your very own unique experiences, we aim to shine a flashlight on some sequins that might just slightly light your path. Just a little. We all have a why behind what we do. A coworker of mine used to say, why has a long tail? Get it? It's fun to go to the YMCA. It's fun to go to the YMCA. You can jump up and down. You can wear a great crown at the YMCA. Fun to go at the YMCA. Everybody. Fun to go at the YMCA. 
You can jump on the ground, wear a royal crown at the YMCA. <laughs> Beautiful. You're doing great. Thank you. I know this makes some people incredibly uncomfortable. But, <laughs> but so many things do, right? I'll keep my why short and sweet. I was blessed to have a very close relationship with my Nana. We lived together, off and on, throughout my youth. In the last decade of her dynamic life, she started to experience and display symptoms of dementia. She ended up being labeled with vascular dementia. In the midst of living with vascular dementia, do you want to know what else she was living with? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> I heard sure. <laughs> uh, a wickedly unique sense of style and self-expression. A, a silly snort at the end of her laugh. <laughs> and a fond love for music and dance. Yeah. Her name was Shayla, and, gosh, you guys are making me emotional. I ran through this like 12 times. I say, <laughs> and we called her Shay for short. She put the Shay in sachet. So, <laughs> So please, from the seated position, small or big, sashay those shoulders, please. Shay of my heart, I love you. Shay of my heart, oh yeah. I love you. Yes. I always knew it would be you. Since I heard you were my nana, you are sure my top banana. Shay of my heart, I love you. Shay of my heart, I love you. I'll always stay faithful this way to my Shay. Yes. That was so awesome. I had not heard that rendition. Thank you, Colleen. Oh, how glamorous she was. Do you want to know what her final words were during her final manicure? Yes. Yes. Where's the top coat? Ah! <laughs> Nana Shea sparked my huge fascination with enhancing the lives of those living with dementia. About seven years and nearly thousands of interactions with hundreds of people living with dementia, I awaken more and more each day to what truly matters. So each one of you has your very own unique why for being here. Your why is not my why. And whoever you provide care for has their very own why as well. It's this constant whyness. <laughs> Every single thing we cover in this hour may not resonate with you, but if just one thing does, we consider that a huge win. Okay, I've got a confession. Working in an array of care environments, in an array of roles, it becomes clear to me that the remaining peaceful and playful thing is not always very valued and promoted. And it's not always easy. There's so much to consider, so many plans to make, so many people to help, so many details to stew over, so many things could go wrong. Sometimes I think so darn much, it's like my brain is a care engine. And it's overheating. <gasps> Do that with me. <sighs> One more time. <sighs> Yes. Before our heads explode, we've got to commit to at least one play scription and one piece scription each day or as needed for the nursing folks out there, PRN. PRN play scription. <laughs> Let me tell you a quick, quick story. 
I was working as a recreation assistant for a dementia-specific care unit. A woman who lived there, we'll call her Sally, was amidst the tail end of her Alzheimer's experience. She was often sunken in her chair, quiet, unanimated. I was determined to liven her up. Sometimes I want to be the dementia whisperer. <laughs> One day during exercise, amidst a large group of about 15 people that lived on her floor, I was feeling silly. Surprise, surprise. Really tapping into my sense of play. There, Sally sat, disengaged. I so badly wanted her to get involved with what she could do from her wheelchair. I walked over to Sally, and I gently said, Sally, open your eyes. She slowly opened her eyes. I kneeled down to her eye level and made intentional eye contact with her, kind of unsure of what I'd do next. And then the forces that be just shoved my tongue out of my mouth, and I went. <laughs> and Sally roared in laughter, tilted her head back, and went. <laughs> this is true. All of these stories are true. So that was our thing. And that one little tongue out of the mouth from the forces that be changed our relationship. And then nearly every time I saw her, that's all I had to do. It was like the best play scripture ever. And not to say every day was a good day, but geez, really made a difference. So when you don't know what to do, just kind of wait a little bit. Something will come. <laughs> a play scription can be as simple as a funny gesture or word, or as elaborate as an outing. It's totally up to you. Unlike more traditional medications, there are no harmful side effects, and you can use as many as you want. <laughs> right now, I want you to think of the most playful person in your life. Do you have a pen? Does everybody have a pen? OK. Any age this person can be, just think of the most playful person in your life and write their name down. Have them be your play accountability collaborator. Tell them what you need from them. It can be as simple as, please play that game with the person I'm caring for so that I can get some work done. If possible, schedule a repeatable appointment for doing so. Our play accountability collaborators, collaborators, I have to say that a few more times, it's going to be interesting, may need to tell us a joke when we sound crabby. The list of play accountability partners can and will expand as you start acknowledging more and more people as collaborators and letting them know that you value them as such. The thing is, 98% of people really like to help. We're social creatures. No matter how much we want to convince ourselves that people don't want to help, they really, really do. This is a great example of that. I've got an amazing help here. We get hung up on that 2%. So let's focus on the 98. Helping gives us purpose. We like it. If someone's not helping, it's because they don't know what to do. Everyone just wants to know their place, so we can tell people what they need. These are some example play scriptions. This is the beautiful Margaret Mary. She plays with me anytime that I want. So it can be humor, dress up, music, movement, drama, visual arts, storytelling, imagination, poetry, nature, and the list goes on. We'll go through some of these more in depthly. These are all on your slides. I'm all about simple directions for stronger connections. We do better together. When it comes to caregivers, care receivers, and collaborators, there are times when people need to be told exactly what to do. But within that structure, there's so much room for organic connection and creativity. How much 
She's that dog in the window. Where's our dog? The friend? one with the waggly tail. How much is that dog in the window? I do hope that doggy's for sale. If you had to guess, how much is that doggy in the window? Yell it out. Anyone? How much? Priceless. I, do I have another bidder, another bidder? <laughs> what? Double priceless. Double priceless, Gordon. I don't know everyone's name. I know Gordon's. Okay. Animals are the best, of course. They can be collaborators. Definitely. This dog knows how to do a marvelous and rare thing. Do you want to know what it is? Yeah. It knows how to sit and stay. <gasps> oh, wow. It's not even in front of a TV. In the beginning years of being a part of care teams, do you want to know what I noticed right away? What? Um, <laughs> almost no one on the care team wanted to sit and stay. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing an amen. Sitting and providing a calm presence or holding a hand was not written in the care plans. There was a deficiency in the art of being with. Do you have someone in your life who you can just sit next to without saying a word? You just like to know they're there? Give me like a solid nod. And if you're seriously saying no, then like make that solid because I want to find you. Pick your brain. <laughs> This is something humans like that doesn't change. Just because someone needs care doesn't mean you can't just simply sit with them. Another beautiful trick as a peace description for yourself if you're feeling uneasy is to do a quick body scan. For two to 10 minutes, you can close your eyes. I was gonna run you through this, but we are so action packed, I just can't. You scan from your head down to your neck, to your chest and your torso and down your arms and to your hips and thighs and knees and ankles. And you relax and you check in and you feel the senses. In your mind, let me tell you, it wanders off in weird places, but you feel better after. Sometimes we think that the more we do, the, the more control we have but relax, nothing is under control. Another beautiful peace scription is breathing. Let's do that together. Three deep breaths, one in and out. One more in and out. That's pretty simple. It doesn't solve all the world's problems, but you know, the air is free, free for the taking. I think um, we're starting to learn now more than ever that control really is an illusion. Sometimes all we can do is take deep breaths of that available free air. Sitting as a source of calm presence and intentional breathing are some examples of peace scriptions. For some it's walking or making a to-do list. Peace scriptions can cause no harmful side effects and you can do them as much as you want. Right now, I want you to think of, pen in hand, ready? Think of the most peaceful person in your life. Think of the most peaceful person in your life and write their name down. Have them be your peace accountability collaborator. Tell them what you need from them. It can be as simple as, please sit with the person I'm caring for so that I can do laundry. Or please do my laundry so that I can sit with the person I'm caring for. <laughs> if possible, schedule a repeatable appointment for doing so. Our peace accountability partners may need to tell us to breathe when we sound crabby and know that we might want to punch them in the face for doing so. This list of peace accountability partners can and will expand as you start acknowledging and valuing people as collaborators. It's my favorite part. Okay, so this, depending on what mood you're in, this quote will either annoy you or you'll love it. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. 
It empties today of its strength. My wonderful mother, the daughter to Shay, always says that worry is like a rocking chair. It takes up time, but it gets you nowhere. Let's do that call and response style. So I'm gonna say a line and you're gonna repeat it. I will tell you what to do through my hands. Worry. Worry. worry is like a rocking chair. It's like a rocking chair. It takes up time. It takes up time. But it gets you nowhere. But it gets you nowhere. Beautiful. <laughs> wee wee. So I've been asking you today and I haven't been able to ask all of you, but I've been asking you, what makes your day just a little bit better? And I've written it down, they're all simple, and worrying is not on the list. <laughs> so Colleen, in her beautiful, amazing talents, is going to sing that to you as a song. What makes your day just a little bit better? Maybe in my morning prayer, someone else is smiling at me. Quiet time with my grandchildren, playing with my kids, laughing with humor. Pray for the good of all, people without judgment from me. Kindness, laughing, and coffee. Woo, coffee. There's the key to my happiness coffee. Well, good mornings and my clients, family, and when I talk to residents and make them smile, I think Mindy's smile, kissing my mom on the cheek, and oil painting in the sun. See, you've got it in there. That's why it's called tapping into your personal sense of play, not listening to this strange girl with antennas. You've got it in there, and we all have a different method of becoming more playful and more peaceful. So thank you for doing that with me. That was really fun. Give yourselves a hand. Yeah. The art of fun. A lot of people ask me what I do, and it perplexes me. I don't know how to answer it. I come up with all types of titles, and I just don't really know what to say. But I have no special talents. I'm only passionately curious. I took that from Albert Einstein. <laughs> now we're going to dive deeper into the art of fun. During my early years of working in care environments, I was also getting a bachelor's degree in community art. It took me a long time after getting my BA to start calling myself an artist. <laughs> artist can be a word that is intimidating. Raise your hand if you think you're an artist. See, but there's more of you that actually are and then you're just not raising your hand and you're doing like a weird chicken wobble. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I tried to initiate art programs in communities, people would tell me, I'm not an artist. So I learned that I shouldn't call something art until after it was created. Takes the pressure off. <laughs> art is not a thing. It is a way. It is a way to respond to life. I heard an mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, amen. Yeah. A uh, response is different than a reaction. When I face challenges in the work I do with those living with dementia, and just generally those living, to be darn right completely honest, I always say it's really mostly just primarily those who are living that sometimes cause me challenges in how I feel about things. It's like a human to human scenario. So I say to myself, think of this as a work of art. Where is the beauty? The words on the bottom, are describing words used for art critiques. To me, they also sound like describing words for people and life, and also the effects of dementia. Let me tell you another quick story. One evening, I was asked to provide companionship and recreation to a man living with dementia who'd recently began to go blind. Yeah, 
Where's the fun in that? I was doing my best to be attentive, kind, and supportive when he says very loudly, Ah, oh, pew, your breath smells. <laughs> it reeks like garlic. I was so embarrassed. I took a moment. It's the best advice I can give. Take a moment. I didn't speak for a few seconds. Thing is, I had just taken a dinner break where I did eat a salad with very garlicky dressing. In that moment, I realized that his sense of smell was probably really heightened. As his sight was diminishing, he was annoyed, potentially traumatized in a temporary care unit at sundown. Didn't want some stranger breathing garlic into his face. So what, what did I do? Any guesses? Laughed, something about flowers, got some flowers. Who was that? That's a good idea. It's brilliant. I covered my mouth and I said, oh, wow, you're totally right. My breath smells like garlic. Geez, I need a breath mint. We shared a laugh, actually. I told him that I'd visit him another time with fresher breath. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we ended up getting along quite well. He told me about his former passion for hunting, a passion he'd lost due to his disease. Where's the beauty in that, you might wonder? Perhaps there's beauty in the raw honesty, or the beginning of a rather delightful relationship, or reminiscing about what once brought him joy. I also feel gratitude for breathments and forgiveness. You know? Remember when reality didn't matter? Do you? Yeah? Just a quick note, The Longest Dance is a great online resource for, for support. The raw honesty I've noted in this work makes me think back to childhood, when we'd say and do things without inhibition. There's a term in the geriatric realm called retrogenesis. It applies most relevantly to the progression of Alzheimer's showing itself as a type of reverse development. This is commonly perceived as negative because we hold on to the story of who that person was with a really tight grip. Let's all make a tight grip with our hands. Really tight, I can see that some of you aren't doing it. <laughs> Come on, hold a tight grip. Okay, maybe we can even pretend like we're on a motorcycle or something. Nah, 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 nah. Is it a sunny day, people? Is it sunny? It's sunny. Okay, no, actually, we're on the motorcycle so we shouldn't let go, but okay, you're just doing a trick. Let go. Okay, hold on again. All right. So understandably so, especially if the person is a parent or a spouse or so many other things, we, we want to think about who they were. We love them. And I've got to add that we certainly can't talk to or treat a person who has a rich history like a child. Although, may we take just a moment to be really radical and emphasize some of the perks of retrogenesis or backwards development. Does anybody have any that come to mind? Like playfulness? Loss of inhibition? Curiosity? Keen present moment awareness? Retained senses? Imagination? You did a good job on the motorcycle and putting on the eye care crown. So what makes someone thrive at any age? Any guesses? Laughter. Laughter? Yeah. Love. You cheated. No, I'm just kidding. Love. Love at any age. And now, I'm pretty sure, Colleen's going to grace us with a beautiful song. Where I spell love? Yeah, where you spell love. L. 
is for the way you listen to me. Oh, is for the way you observe what you see. V, I value you so much. I love you and E. I engage in everything you come up, even if it's silly. That's love. Is all that I can give to you. Love is more than just a game for two. Two with love can make it take my heart, but please don't break it. Love was made for me and you. Beautiful. Love. Love goes beyond words, although acronyms can really be useful for a care collaboration process. When I do creative engagement groups, which is part of what I do, and I'll explain kind of what those are, I don't entertain or amuse. I love, L-O-V-E, listen, observe, value, and engage. Yes, I got a chuckle. These are, yes, I have to give attention to the people that deal with what I put them through, but then they seem to kind of like it when it's all said and done. And with that said, does anybody want to dress up a little? Somebody raise your hand if you'll put a funny hat on. I know who the angel is in here today. You're heading the right way. Continue on. He's got a blue shirt on. You're almost there. He's on your left. He thought he was disguised beautifully. There's a hole in the middle of that where it goes over his head. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Put on his wings, those are his wings. And certainly last, but not least of all, where's his halo? My earth angel, earth angel, it's you I adore. My darling angel, I love you forevermore. I'm just a fool, a fool in love. Ray, you're our earth angel. You are a good sport. You seriously have an eye. Wow. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> First, we will cover listen. Are you listening? Yes. You've got to be. <laughs> so the key to listening, and I know it seems really, 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 really basic, so I'm actually going to summarize the details. But really, honestly, to listen to someone means to really give our full attention. And if we don't think we can do that, we've got to find the collaborators that can, because it's really hard to listen really well when you're just totally fried. So, the key to listening is one, be quiet, two, visibly show that you're listening, and three, remind yourself as you trail off into your own thought to continue listening. Something that's hugely important to remember is we can actively listen to people who speak another language and or do not make sense. Well, I should say, I hate that phrase, so I should say, do not make sense. That's just something I commonly hear as well. It didn't make sense. But you still have to actively listen. In fact, it's almost more important to consciously listen at these times. I know what you're thinking. But I don't know what they're saying. What do I do? The key is to listen differently. When you watch the expression on their face and you listen to their tone, you are able to pay attention to the essence 
of what they're trying to communicate. This takes practice, really does, and it works wonders. I did a 16-week series of creative engagement in a fully Russian-speaking memory care using these methods. You'll be amazed at what you learn and how you can still connect with someone. There was somebody out in the ex exhibition hall, is that right, exhibitors space, named Sharon, and I don't know exactly, she, she works for someone in there, does anyone know? Yell it out. No? Lutheran home, yeah, yes. And she was saying that uh, someone that lives in one of their memory cares has lost uh, the ability to remember names and, and always verbalize, but she has this way of describing the people that work there where she uses hand motions that show what their hairstyle is like. Like, that's just incredible. You know, it's beautiful. So she'll say, you know, she'll, when she says she wants someone, it'll be like this or like this, and Sharon could tell it all better. I just learned that today. But that was a great example. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to listening after asking a question, because when I do creative engagement groups, I ask open-ended questions that do not rely on memory and that tap into the senses that are retained. But that doesn't mean that people just jump out and answer right away. I mean, even in a room full of anyone, someone is, there's reservations. So what I do is I ask the question, and then I wait. And in my mind, I count to at least eight, around 10 seconds in my mind. And then I repeat. And this time, I use some sort of action and more expressive face and body language. I feel like I haven't let you talk very much, Colleen. Do you have anything to say about that? I actually watched you work in the non-English speaking uh, unit and I learned a great deal just about the tone that you're talking about as far as understanding what someone was saying. And at this point I'm actually dealing with my father-in-law who's in the third stage of Alzheimer's and it's coming in beautifully because the tone uh, really, ex really means as much and the look on the face as uh, the communication did before it was necessary for me to actually observe that. Yeah. Well, and we've got to listen to ourselves. That's, that's a huge thing. And, and I'm going to notice I say we because I'm not not talking to me. I mean, this is, takes time. We've got to listen to ourselves and the, the words and tones we're using. The words and tones. <laughs> the words and tones. The words and tones. We've got to listen to our inner dialogue. That's so huge. Like, what did those things in your mind ever, ever, what did you ever do to them to talk to you that way? The things you say in your own head about your own self, just as, as a human. Oh, I got a. <gasps> Are we being kind and gentle to ourselves in our external dialogue? Are we blocking collaborators? Are we emphasizing the negative? Cool, I don't wanna feel like I'm scolding you. I'm getting kind of intense. Okay, next is observe. All right, so observe. I'm observing that I'm boring some of you. Hmm, what do I do about that? <laughs> so observe. To, to observe is to notice or perceive something and register it as being significant. At times it may seem like someone is doing something odd or potentially doing something for no reason. And this is for just all of life, all humans. Although everything we do feel, say, and don't say is for a reason. Once again, this applies to ourselves and everybody and everything in all the land. We've got to observe ourselves. Are we tired? Are we grumpy? Are we irritated? At that time, we've got to look at our list of collaborators. And that list can and will expand. An important part of observing is registering what we observe to be significant. 
So at that point, we really need our collaborators. Our observations of what makes us tired, grumpy, and irritated can lead us to solutions through collaboration. Think back to the peaceful person. Think back to the playful person. Tell them what you need. Remember that they want to help. And value. OK, so where Joe and his mustache that fell off right away, I don't know where he is. But Joe is wonderful at giving value. He hands people value all day. All I've been seeing him say is, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that you're here. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, if you're watching, Joe, the DVD or whatever, where's the camera? I'm talking to you. No. <laughs> but value. We crave value. We all do. To value is to regard that someone is deserving. To recognize the importance, worth, or usefulness of someone. We all want to feel valued, and this does not change. It doesn't ever, 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 ever change. <laughs> so even with brain disease, anything can happen, and we still want to know that we're valued. And we will do best if we can seek out and recognize and utilize the remaining abilities of ourselves and others. Doesn't it feel great when we're told thank you? Let's call and respond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yes. I don't know what I'd do without you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Yes. That just feels good. Someone can say anything. It can even be really cruel. And we can respond with that. A lot of times I say thank you, and then someone's like, why? They still like it. <laughs> you can tell yourself these things in the mirror, and you're still going to release a bit of serotonin. You know, wake up, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. You'll be there all day. <laughs> what would I do without you? I wouldn't be me. Oh, life is deep. <laughs> so sometimes value is also shown by the things that we refrain from saying. So to refrain from saying something like, yeah, you told me that a million times. We can just save the breath and like the air that we don't want to expel. We can just Meow, not do it. The peace scription, we can do the body scan, the breathing, whatever. So value can be shown in what we don't say. And value can be a look, a hug, a gesture. Everyone's got a love language. You've, you've heard that thing? Raise your hand. The whole five love language thing. So some people love gifts. Some people love words of affirmation. I won't go through a different presentation, but you get what I mean. And now we're getting to the most fun, the E, to engage. To engage is to be involved, which leads us to a toolbox full of creative ways to engage others, both at home and in the community. Right now, pen in hand. Got your pen? I want you to think of the most artistic, or you can call them creative, person in your life. And you might say, what if the peaceful, playful, and artistic person is all one? Well, gosh, they're cool. But really try to think of three. So the most artistic person in your life, or the most creative, and write their name down. Have them be your artistic accountability collaborator. Tell them what you need from them. It can be as simple as, come play your instrument for the person I'm caring for so that I can go for a walk. It can be, come bring your painting or knitting and see if we can all learn some tricks together. The list of artistic accountability partners can and will expand as you start acknowledging people as collaborators. I got it, mm-hmm. Repetition, it works. It's a thing. Okay, goodness gracious good, I can stop talking for a moment. And we are gonna explore music and movement. So for all the tools in the toolbox I'm giving you, which may seem quite obvious, but we'll kind of explore them differently, I've got the list on the bottom of the pictures, which is in your notes, 
And if you can just Google those, or if you want to get a, a card of mine, I'm happy to send you the direct links. But for the most part, all of this stuff is local. So like Kairos Alive does all-inclusive intergenerational dance halls that they market online so that you can get involved. McPhail, Music for Life, Giving Voices. Anybody in Giving Voices? Yeah, woo-woo, I always get that. Yes, we've got all kinds of, all kinds of you from the choir. We've got Music and Memory, Dance for PD, and Colleen Bald Hebla. So, yeah. So Colleen's gonna shed a bit of light on this topic. Trust me, no one wants to hear me sing. <laughs> Right now, I just want to let you know that I had a, a gentleman by the name of Ed. He has had dementia, and he had broken a hip, and he refused to do physical therapy. He was to the point where his hip was just going to freeze where it was. And I went in there and said, Ed, I think you need to do some music and movement. We started doing the foxtrot, and he was fine. <laughs> Three years later, I got a call. Ed broke his other hip. <laughs> too much foxtrotting. Right now, if you feel like it, I know you're very crowded. One of my favorite things to do are chair dances. We do the polka in the chair. Right now, I like to go with little Patsy Cline to do a little a walk in after midnight, even if you just bounce your toes. I go a walk in after midnight in the moonlight, just like we used to do. I go a walk in. After midnight, searching for you. Now you gotta sing it with me too. I walk for miles along the highway because it's my way of saying I love you. I go a walking after midnight, searching for you. Now swing your arms, I gotta see the weeping willow crying on my pillow. Maybe he's crying for. Come on, you guys from McPhail. And as the night gets gloomy, the night wind whispers to me, I'm lonesome as I can be. I go out walking after midnight in the moonlight, just hoping I will see you out there walking after midnight, searching for me. Give yourselves a hand, you sound fabulous. Yes, yes, yes. We've got people in new form. We've got Misbehave over on the right, and there's a fire drill. No. Really Misbehave, naughty. do you want to stand up? She's the naughtiest gal in the room. Yes. <laughs> Misbehave. And we've got a duo down here. Stand up. Show yourselves. Whee! Yes, everything's more exciting with the fun hat. It really is. Improvisational communication, that's another tool for your toolbox. So we've got Dementia Raw and Silver Dawn Training as one of our resources there. They do an online training and they do a two-day workshop. The two-day workshops are usually in Chicago, but what better excuse than that to go to Chicago. The online training is really great as well, and I'm happy to talk to you more about that anytime. Raise your hand if you've heard of Tipa Snow. Okay, more people need to know about Tipa Snow. That rhymes, there you go. <laughs> so write Tipa Snow down. She has wonderful, free, very informative, descriptive, realistic, and many other words, videos. <laughs> she's got free online videos. She's an occupational therapist. She's wonderful. So she's a great resource. She uses improvisational communication all the time. What, do we ha what else do we have there? We've got scripted improv, which actually is evidence-based. They were able to get some research surrounding the act of having improv acting groups um, with lots of participants to figure out that it actually did things like reduce blood pressure and things like that. You can Google that. And in the moment is another 
online resource. And then I call what I do, I change it all the time, but mostly at the core, it's Shay's way, of course. And I do improv all day, all day, every day. And like I said, Tipa Snow. So the core, the core of improv is, is anybody here an improver? Sometimes you're hiding out. Has anyone taken an improv class? No? They have them at the Brave New Workshop. They do samplers every month um, where you play improv games. It's totally free. The Brave New Workshop is downtown. So um, essentially, in our relationships with just about everyone, including someone we may be caring for, we can avoid our agenda and focus on L-O-V-E to connect before we direct. It doesn't add too much time. Even like the, when I was talking about listening, are you listening? Are you listening? When I was talking about listening and I said I wait eight to 10 seconds, in the world we live in, someone's gonna be really dramatic and be like, <laughs> eight to 10 seconds. And it's like, that's 20 seconds. That's 20 seconds in addition to a conversation. It's only 20 seconds. So. If you, you, we're always worried, we're always worried there's an agenda, we have to get medication given, we have to get, you know, I've been a CNA, I can't say that I was miraculously good at it as some people I've witnessed, but I, I can, my, my sister's a nurse, I, can, I know that we can't just always play around, totally know that, but I've actually seen a lot of people save a ton of time. Um, I know Colleen has seen people save t not being restrained or not being given medication from proper communication where you kind of abandon that agenda and you go with the moment and you yes and is what improvers call it you make your partner look good so with yes you don't always have to be saying yes but you're accepting what that person is saying and maybe you're even adding to it and this is something you will have to practice. You can practice with um, your play accountability partner. I think all your accountability partners could handle it pretty well. You could practice. You could look up improv games and, and practice that. We'll practice a little bit today, too. All right. OK, so we are going to practice. So you're going to do this with your neighbor. And there's going to be. I know this is just a really painstaking process to like figure out who you have to talk to, figure out who's A, who's B, it's so scary, but it'll all work out. And if it has to be three, but wait, wait, hold on, hold on, I have instructions. Hold on one moment. So let's say that person A will be um, the person whose first name is closest to A, and person B will be the other person. And uh, what a declaration is, is it's an I statement. It's a, you know, I can say, I am a tiger. I am a tiger. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Roar. You could roar at me. You could say, I'm one too. I want pistachios. I feel gassy. <laughs> I need you to stop bugging me. Get it? <laughs> okay, so your declaration, don't overthink it. Doty, D-O-T-I, don't overthink it. Just say it, it can just come right out. So person A does the declaration, person B follows with a yes and, which means an open response where you add something of your own. And we were, we're gonna do this, I'm gonna cut you off, and then we're not even gonna talk about it till the Q&A. Okay, so that's the plan. Ready, set, go.
Okay. Yoop, boop, boop, boo. Maybe like strum. Ready. Attention. I hope that was fun. I hope that was really, really, really fun. Okay, so we'll talk more about how that went during Q&A, which I'm already denting into because I just want to get through my stuff. But I just wanted to give a bit of an example. Uh, a lo a something I see a lot is I want to go home. And it's a challenge. It's, yeah? I want to go home. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Sing it with me. Well, I had a little drink about an hour ago and it went right to my head. No matter where I go, boy, on land or sea or foam, you can always hear me singing this song. And somebody show me the way Oh, you got it. So, you can bust into song. It does work. I have done it. I want to go home. I want to go home. Show me the, oh. I want to go home. Oh, I do I too. Right I, I do too. I do too. I love home. I want to go too. I love home because of the familiar smells. I want to go home. Yeah, where about is home for you? I just want to go home. Yeah. I know. You make me feel at home. You make me feel at home, too. Thank you. Home is where the hugs are. Home is where the hugs are. And it might not always go as smoothly as that, but... <laughs> But, you know, there's time constraints. But that is something, the more you practice, the more opportunities you'll see for conversations. We could have gone into the familiar smell thing for quite a while. Well, you've done great. Thank you so much. We're going to go to visual art real quickly. Um, these are the resources on the bottom. For those who made art prior to diagnosis, it's great to stick with it. For those who didn't make art prior to diagnosis, they may find themselves interested in art making as a new hobby. For others, it doesn't always have to be about making art. Let me explain this further. For example, to get people engaged, I'll set up pieces of paper and pencils at a table. Even just simple lead pencils, paper. Doesn't have to be crayons or colored pencils. And uh, I don't make a big deal. I just put the pencil and paper in front of them and say, make your mark. Some people dive right in and doodle. Others watch their neighbor. What are you doing there? No. Some might organize the papers. They might want to stack them. They might want to grab the pencils and organize those. They might clean up any messes. One man, who we both knew, we'll call him Ricky, if I busted out the pencils and paper, he'd tell me, don't you have a ruler for me? I don't draw unless the lines can be perfectly straight. You know, I was a con contractor that designed homes. Ricky, yes, I know. Tell, tell, tell me about the contracting days. So that would lead to conversation. So story. Everyone's got a story. Hearing and telling stories is a basic, raw human need. It can be as simple as telling the story. You might need to refer back to your peace accountability partner to come and listen to the same story that you've heard far too many times. And that's all right. Find, collaborate with new ears for the story because I'm, it's probably a really good story. Um, we've got Storyology, the discs, made by a, a local gentleman who designed this storytelling game. And it's really great for uh, times when the whole family's together. And you can pass around this disc. You can either spin it or pass it and grab it with your thumb down and flip it. And it gives you a word. And you say, oh, what was your first camp experience? 
Or what was your most recent camp experience? Um, and you don't really have to use the word remember. You can just start talking about camp. Um, and, and things crop up. There's time slip storytelling, which is completely imaginative stories. Um, that's where you just literally make stuff up. That's my favorite. Uh, you cue into the senses, and you make things up. I just have to show you one example of a time slip story. There's also um, Discover Your Story at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. I'm going to flip. OK, we got the penguins. This is a time slip story. You can print these off online um, through the time slips website. Just Google time slips. And I'm going to read you one um, that I wrote with a group in a memory care. And right away, you're... Your um, part of you is going to go, oh, well, that's incorrect. But, um, well, that's okay. So, it's called seafood. It's very short. There are two creatures in this picture. Their religion is Jewish. <laughs> seals. There are two seals. It's cute. Icky sun and picky sun from South America. And they dance. I love it. It's romantic. They're holding hands. That's a significant something. Their eyes met when they fell over each other in the water, and they smiled. Beautiful seals, right? <laughs> Beautiful seals, right? Yes. Yeah. Some beautiful seals. So those are some storytelling tools. And on to poetry. So you can use, um, well, you know, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely. Yes. I never saw a purple cow. But I can tell you anyhow. Yes. So poetry doesn't have to be sitting and reading poetry or writing poetry. It could just be saying one line of poetry and having that person complete it. And then they feel a little more connected, and they feel really cool. And then you can ease on to what you're doing. Oh, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. So I think people get bogged down, like, OK, we're going to have a new poetry program. It's going to take a lot of things to do, and it's going to be hard, and we're going to do it well. No, it doesn't have to be that way. You can simply just say the first line of a poem, and it makes things better. We kind of made a poem today. I, sometimes I call them word collages um, so that people don't feel intimidated. So if I read that back to you, if we had the time, I could make it sound very poetic. And we all made it together. And some of you would hear your parts and you'd say, wow, I did that. I feel value. I feel listened to. I feel observed. I feel valued. I feel engaged. That's a big bundle of L-O-V-E right there. All right. So. For example, we can either look at the clouds, or we can look at these clouds, and I can say, what do you notice about these clouds? There's no gravy. There's no gravy? I love that. OK. <laughs> There's no gravy. Thank you. Yes. Well, that does it. <laughs> Goodbye. That was perfect. So that, that right there, that's a poem. Where's the gravy? Yes. So you could be sitting outside, um, and you could just look up at the sky and say, what do you notice in the sky? If, the, if you could scoop out of the sky and taste it, what do you think it might taste like? Mashed potatoes. Yes. So you can sit and brainstorm with your, um, your creative collaborator. What would be some good questions? These are, these are examples of beautiful questions thought of by the brilliant Ann Basting, who thought of time slips. So if you want to write down Ann Basting, she's got, once again, a whole other day long uh, presentation. So accessible outdoors, these are on your slides. So you can go in the backyard. Um, the outdoors is something people really, 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 really crave, and we don't even know it. And sometimes if we say, do you want to go outside, um, somebody will say no just because they don't really understand how they'll get there and whatnot. And so are there, there are better ways to ease into going outside, like, gosh, it's nice out. I'd love to go. I'll take you. Um, or let's check out 
something, you know, just, just go outside, just go. And if, I promise it won't end up being horrible. <laughs> It'll probably work out okay. So go outside, um, go around the neighborhood, get to know people in the neighborhood. Um, the state trails, they're, they're marked in Minnesota. If you go on that website, there, there's wheelchair accessibility markings. The Arboretum, one of the 10,000 lakes, the Como Zoo, and the Northeast Senior Services, um, that website has really good resources. Companion carts. So if you are hesitant to go in public because you know, you're nervous that something might happen or uh, someone might misconstrue a situation, you can get these cards to, to hand to people. And really it's like people need to get over themselves and you just, they can handle it. Whatever they see, they can handle. People are strong. But you can get these cards if it makes you feel more comfortable. And then um, accessible indoors, of course, your own house. So invite people to you, invite family to you. You can play the storyology game. Um, you can listen to music together. People can show off their odd talents, whatever. Um, museums, the Minneapolis Institute of Art has a, a special tour. There is the number to get in contact with them. And then I found Panera to be quite pleasant, just in my observations. Um, malls, libraries, bookstores, and senior centers, which, very sad to say, some are closing. And I, that's a bummer, but um, they're great. So we might need to like join up and collaborate and make some sort of whimsical fundraiser for whatever's happening there. I don't know. So um, accessible indoors is also a great tool. All right, we've got Arthur's Memory Cafe, which my utmost apologies is not on the slides that I printed. I added this last minute. So you can take a picture of the screen or you can Google it. It's the second and fourth Wednesdays in Roseville. And memory cafes are just brilliant. You can make your own with your collaborators. Am I keeping it up long enough? No. Good. The, the premise of a memory cafe is for people to get together and talk, enjoy each other's company. And before we go, or before we go into Q&A, I want to take a vow, a group vow together, all of us, even the people that just walked in. Um, put your hand on your heart. And this releases serotonin and oxytocin, if you didn't know. Hand on heart. And we're going to practice our call and response, which is another great tool. I solemnly swear, I solemnly swear. to collaborate and delegate, to, collaborate and delegate. to, make, room to make room for daily doses of peace and play. To L-O-V-E, myself and others. To embrace the art of fun. Yay, it's official. You are enlightened. <laughs> we could play a little song and then and then we'll do Q and A. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. Why do you a friend and a Thank you for being a friend. Sticking with me to thick and thin. All this world is doable with you as my friend.
thoughts? That's so great. How did, oh, a question. Well, I would just share that, you know, I discovered recently that if you need a good joke, um, I'm not sure about Siri, but Alexa will tell oh. you a joke. And all you have to do is say, Alexa, tell us a joke. Yes. It's great. Alexa, tell us a joke. I have to. We've got two. I have to share a memory cafe story. We had a Christmas party, and one of the gentlemen had been wheeled in a wheelchair and serious dementia. And we were singing Christmas carols. And we had 11, let's see, ukuleles and an old man performing oh. the Christmas carols. <laughs> and uh, they started Silent Night. He raised his head, sang four verses of Silent Night, and then put his head down again. Mm-hmm. Silent night until he shared his silent night. Right. I, I saw a hand up there, and then now I see a hand down here. You go ahead. <laughs> I just want to put in a plug for the St. Paul Giving Voice Chorus. They are giving their concert tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. at Concordia College and E.M. Pearson Theater. Cool. So I just wanted to know if you would tell us more about being a certified dementia practitioner. Yeah, so I did that through, um, so basically it's the National Board of Certified Dementia Practitioners if you look up NCCDP, and you essentially fill out an application that verifies that you have three years of experience working in long-term care, preferably with people living with dementia. And then you do an online, you do a full day workshop, and I believe a test that is very simple, and you get all the information in the workshop, and that's how you become certified. There's a lot more certifications popping up now. You can become a certified dementia communication specialist through Silver Dawn Training, which is referenced under Improv. Thanks. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. I just I wanted to offer the idea. I think a lot of your ideas um, were tapping into extroverted type of fun and play. And I just yes. wanted to it, which is fantastic, but I also just wanted to encourage those of you who may have people who are more introverts, but to help them engage in their fun and play, although it may be individual. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a client in a assisted living facility who had her own apartment, but she'd always come around the common areas and complain that there was no desk to do any work at. Mm -hmm. And she complained about that for a while, and I thought, if that's all she's asking for, I'll just put a table up in our activity room and make sure a little spot is always cleared off for her. And sure enough, she adopted it immediately and spent hours in there, content, reading, writing. She was, and she would come away from it very happy to see people, and, and so she was engaging in her own play and engaging in herself in that way and that fed her spirit and what she needed. Um, and I, I just wanted to encourage people to, that, um, that that can also be tapped into if they have somebody in their life who's not quite, doesn't quite get into the more extroverted type of exuberance <laughs> that has been shown today here. So thank you. Got it, cool, thank you. And they, that's great that you got her a desk and made that happen. How did the, um, it, how did it feel to, to talk to your neighbor for that improvisational, the yes and? Yeah? Cool. Are we, is that, are we good? Oddball, Oddball Academy. 
Yeah. So essentially, a bachelor's degree in community art. I was I worked as as a nursing assistant, although I was not certified. But years as a nursing assistant, residential instructor. Then worked in long-term care in recreation, and then did the certified dementia practitioner and the certified dementia communication specialist training. Exuberance. Exuberance. Oh yeah. See, this is kind of fake. Like I tapped into what you were talking about with the. I mean, not fake. I shouldn't say that. But I wasn't always. I'm not always this animated. I actually have quite of an introvert in me, so I, I totally hear you with when people need their alone time. That's incredibly, incredibly important. I just learned that, uh, raise your hand if you work in long-term long care where there's just large communities of people. Raise it high. So, okay. Yeah, it's when there's so many people and you're really trying to tap into a lot of people and... Um, and kind of get the group to speak up and bond. And that's where I kind of learned that I needed to be exuberant, good word. But I am usually kind of calm as well. That for sure has its place. That peaceful accountability partner is going to be very important. Any other thoughts? Yeah? And uh, a friend and I did did some concerts for her and came over to her and, you know, kind of introduced ourselves and said, I hope you enjoyed that. And she, she said, I sure did. So it was yes. good to, you know, she wanted to, I mean, that was her life, was teaching music. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so that spoke to her more powerfully than just words alone. Yes, yes. I'm interested to put to practice what you were sharing and all that, but doing it long, not but, and. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yes, I've done my job. <laughs> and doing it long distance with family that lives in another state. So my brain is just going like crazy about, okay, how would this work? I, I love ideas that you have Yeah. about that. It, it works rather well as phone conversation. Um, it could work through sending, sending things, sending prompts, sending pictures. You could ask a question through the mail. Um, you could try out, so it sounds like that person has support near them. So you could try engaging their support and saying, that's kind of an example of what I learned. Do you think you could see yourself doing that? And where do you need help in doing that? I, for like for about a year, my nana was in Florida, so most of our conversations were on the phone, and then I would send her things, and she would love getting stuff in the mail, and we'd just really milk that. And one time, I sent her this card that was like very elaborate, and it was made by a card company, but she insisted that I had made it, and so I was like, "Thank you, thank you. Yes, I get everything I can do. I get it from you," and you know. But I would yeah, I would send her things. Does that answer it? Okay. Yes, I know you. <laughs> I just wanted to address that. There seems to be a lot of families that um, are here. I work in a long-term care facility in the dementia department, so I get to do a lot of these group activities, but I also have a father who has memory loss. And um, I think sometimes it can be hard to feel vulnerable with a person that might, you know, like if you have a father who was like an engineer like I did, um, sometimes to be so outward and fun um, might not always feel like it taps into their personality. But with memory loss, sometimes some of those inhibitions are gone. And um, it really brings a totally new dimension to their life. And so my, just along with today, but... Just let it go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, the moment you're vulnerable in that moment and you're able to be just as fun with them, sometimes it draws them into something new that maybe they haven't even ever experienced. And even in dementia, they want to still learn. Mm -hmm. So even to get to learn something that maybe they've always wanted to be fun and they just didn't know how to be fun, you know? Um, so just an encouragement. If it's your, your, your mom sitting there, if it's your dad or your brother, um, it really takes your vulnerability to be the first person, but so often you can draw them into something that's brand new. And so just take that step of courage to be silly. Take that step of courage to ask a question. Yesterday in my facility I said, what's beautiful to you? And it, you just, I mean, it's not a specific beautiful question, it was just about what beauty was, and every single person had something to say. You know, the men that don't normally say something, they had something. <laughs> And so um, I, I just know that it takes vulnerability to feel like you can get out of your own skin and be silly sometimes, um, but it really is a huge gift to them to get to learn something new. So that's all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Good, great. Well, thank you. Just take your daily doses. Yes. <laughs> After the break, you can do that. So, well, thanks everybody so much. A uh, quick couple of reminders here before we go to break. Please make sure to fill out all your forms, like I've asked you about. Please do visit the exhibitors again. This will be the last break where I think most of them will still be the, be here because after our next presentation, we'll be concluding the day. Um, there is some beverages out there as well, and uh, we'll be come back. Let's say around two thirty, if that's okay. Thanks everybody. Really appreciate it. If, if you want to complete the forms now and turn them in, just turn them in at the front desk. Thank you. <laughs>